So today I'm going to start with Hershey and Chase experiment. Okay, Hershey and Chase experiment is nothing but one of the other experiment uh, which brought into the limelight about why DNA is thought to be the genetic material. Okay, DNA is thought to be the only vector for carrying one expression or one particular character to another generation. Now, uh, 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 apart from that, uh, Avery McLeod and the Griffiths experiments, the Hershey and Chase experiment, two scientists Hershey and Chase who performed this experiment in 1952, they uh, did they did some modifications. Okay, modifications in uh, the in order to understand that whether uh, the DNA was that particular agent which helps in transfection or infection of uh, other parasite. The condition is known as co-infection. Co-infection means uh, there is a capability of the vi of a virus or a particular uh, type of bacteria or particular organism. Okay, uh, uh, in general, if I tell this particular capability known as co-infection has been found in case of particularly in virus and in case of uh, bacteria. Okay, uh, like uh, Escherichia coli. Uh, then uh, there are uh, lactobacillus species of bacteria. There, there are, uh, specifically in e. e. coli. E. coli is the most identifiable and remarkable uh, strain of bacteria in which most of the experiments of this co-infection and transfection and all, or the clonings and or recombinations of the DNAs and all, have been performed till date, as we all know. But in case, in this case, uh, what Hershey and Chase, what they did, uh, they modified the experiment, the previous experiments performed by Avery McLeod and McCarty and Griffith, they modified the experiments with radioactivity uh, in order to identify uh, the presence of the radioactive element, uh, in order to identify the presence of the radioactive element in the culture medium. Okay, and the uh, and in subsequent uh, processes, they help. They were able to identify that the radioactive element, whether that was present with the DNA or not. Okay, but in case of Escherichia coli, the uh, they used Escherichia coli and another uh, another important microorganism, which is called Bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is actually a phage virus which infects bacteria. Escherichia coli is a bacteria and the bacteriophage uh, is, is a virus. Now, phage virus always infects bacteria. The infection happens there. How the infection happens? They help in inserting the genome or inserting the DNA from the virus itself into the bacteria, but not the entire virus enters. The entire virus will not enter within the bacteria. They will insert the DNA or the genome of the bacteriophage. Now, in case of this particular experiment, uh, uh, the, what is the term called co-infection? Co-infection means there is a capability that a particular vector or a carrier organism or a particular microorganism basically can infect two different kind of hosts uh, successively or at the same time. Okay, suppose uh, the, uh, I am uh, taking, a, uh, taking a, po a particular portion from the genome of the uh, phage virus or the phage DNA now, I am infecting that into the uh, genome of the Escherichia coli. Now, the Escherichia coli, the, that the Escherichia coli is uh, recombining with the genome of the uh, uh, phage DNA. Okay, that particular portion of the DNA that came from the DNA of the phage virus, that is recombining with the DNA of the Escherichia coli. Now, Escherichia coli along with this recombinant DNA will be capable of... Uh, in infecting or uh, integrating its the DNA of itself with others, uh, some species of uh, bacteria or other some species of cells, uh, it that, that Escherichia coli can infect. Suppose any other animal cell or human cell, okay, or plant cell. So what is happening? This is the process of co-infection. That that DNA which was isolated from the uh, DNA of the virus can infect the. DNA of Escherichia coli also and can infect the DNA of that particular animal cell or the other cell or the, uh, or, or, which is known as the secondary host. So two hosts or three hosts, whatever it is, generally two hosts, when a particular DNA or an infecting agent can infect that, the condition is called co-infection. Okay, co-associated or co-integrating uh, the DNA with uh, two different or three different kind of host bodies. Now, let me draw the uh, diagrams in order to explain it in uh, properly, that how they did. Okay. First, 
firstly, uh, what Hershey and Chase, these two scientists, what they did, they took the escherichia, uh, they took the phage virus, okay, bacteriophage. The bacteriophage looks like this. Let me consider this as case one, okay. And let this let let me write here case two. This is what a bacteriophage looks like. Phage virus. Now here lies the bacteria. The this is the head. Okay, and the octahedral structure of the bacteriophage. Uh, this is actually the this this portion is the neck and this portion is the body of bacteria. This is entirely known as neck only. Uh, body of the virus. Sorry, bacteriophage is a virus, and this portion is the neck. And now here lies the base plate. The base plate is nothing but the plate-like structure or disc-shaped structure on which this neck and the head uh, exists. This neck and the head balances itself. Now from this base plate, six arms of the bacteriophage will come out. It looks like spider. Okay, a uh, little bit of spider. Has, spider is arachnida group. Uh, they have eight limbs and bacteriophage has six limbs. Let me draw the bacteriophage here also. Okay. So this is another bacteriophage which I have drawn here. Now again here, I have to draw the base plate which is uh, mostly hexagonal, this shape but hexagonal in structure having six legs, okay. And <coughs> now in this bacteriophage, uh, this is the uh, body, a rough diagram of the body of bacteriophage, okay. Now within the head of the bacteriophage lies the genome or the viral DNA, okay. This is, let me, let this black color portion be the genome. Let this be the genome of this bacteriophage. Okay. And here also let me draw the same thing. Okay, this is the genome. Now, the first step of the experiment, what they did, the first step is infection. Step one is infection. What uh, Hershey and Chase did, they infected, uh, they infected the Escherichia coli, E. coli cells with this bacteriophage virus okay let this be the e coli cell okay let this be the e coli cell these are the locomotory organs the flagellin uh, protein or the flagella like structure. Okay. And uh, this tail like structures are the locomotive organs of the Now, in this Escherichia coli, E. coli cells, Escherichia coli is having its self DNA. The self DNA of Escherichia coli is present, which is almost a circular type of DNA. Okay. A circular coiled DNA is present. This is a circular coiled DNA. 
Now, during the stage of infection, what happened? This bacteriophage virus got seated or infected the E. coli cell and inserted the DNA. How they, uh, how they inserted? This was the DNA, right? So this DNA ultimately came through the neck part and through the opening of the basal plate. This is the basal plate. This is having, having an opening uh, from which the DNA will enter into the E. coli cells. So this is what the DNA of the phages, the phage virus, the genome of the phages. And in this case also the same thing happened. In the case 2 also the same thing happened. Okay, they infected it. Now before infecting, there is an, they did another modification. Okay, this is the uh, viral DNA which entered into the Escherichia coli cells. Now before uh, performing this step, they did some improvisation. What they did, in this case 1, they marked, marked the capsid. Capsid is nothing but the protein coat, a proteinaceous structure, which is a complex proteinaceous polymeric structure that coats the genome of the virus. Either it is a double-stranded virus or either it is retrovirus like HIV or whether it is a single-stranded uh, virus having double uh, uh, two DNAs uh, or whether it is a single-stranded virus. There are many viruses like influenza virus is there, tobacco mosaic virus is there. Uh, polyphage virus is there, phage virus is T2, 3, 3, 3, 4, different kind of virus. Now, whatever, the, uh, whatever type of virus it is, virus is always having a protein coat called capsid. Okay, the capsid is a protective coat which shows the antigenicity. Antigenicity means it has a surface protein that is, that is responsible for uh, the antigen, got the disease causing property when it enters into the body of the humans, animals or plants, whatever it is. Okay, now this capsid protein coat, in the first case, they labeled, labeled means tagged the capsid protein coat with 35S. 35S was the 35S protein coat or capsid tag okay 35 is, is actually a radioactive isotope of sulfur and in this case they tagged the DNA with 32 P the DNA of uh, by the DNA of the uh, tagged D 32P tagged DNA sorry tagged DNA of virus okay they did this thing now what happened, what they did, now what they did, after the infection was complete, okay, the 32p tag DNA of the virus and this is the 35s, that is the protein coat, uh, uh, which was being tagged with the radioactive uh, isotope of sulfur and this is the radioactive isotope of phosphorus. The infection was complete, right? Uh, uh, after the infection stage, that is, when, when once the phage virus has entered its DNA into the E. coli cells, after a subsequent period of time within the culture medium, they subject it to the next stage of the cycle, next stage of the experiment. That stage is blending. That particular stage is Blending, okay. Blending or agitation.
blending or agitation. In this case, what happened? This culture solution in which the infection happened from the fast DNA to the bacterial DNA in this culture solution, they uh, blend it, the culture solution on a blender or an agitator. Okay. And as a course of this phenomena, of the, as a course of this consequence of this blending, what happened? The the uh, phage virus, which was present, which which got seated on the peptidoglycan uh, peptidoglycan layer or cell wall of the Escherichia coli bacteria, the phage virus loosened off. It just warded off from the bacterial cell. Due to the agitation, the phage virus got separated. The phage virus got separated. Okay. The phage virus got separated. And uh, here also the same thing happened. The phage virus got separated due to the agitation due to the agitation ok now all it, the fast virus in the infection stage has already inserted its DNA now the DNA in both the Escherichia cells are remaining along with the DNA uh, of the Escherichia coli itself along with the DNA of the Escherichia coli itself ok now this was the stage of blending where the fast virus were being separated from the Escherichia coli cell after the infection now in the third stage of this experiment they centrifuged this entire culture solution in both the cases the third stage was centrifugation ok centrifugation in case of centrifugation what happened uh, when centrifugation was done uh, of this entire experiment in the they collected the sample uh, in within the test tube, okay. Uh, that is in the uh, test tube. It is not the test tube. That uh, centrifuge tube. The falcons of the centrifuge tube. Let me draw the centrifuge tubes here. These are the centrifuge in which the centrifugation uh, they did uh, they uh, centrifuge the entire culture medium. Now what happened? This centrifuge tube obviously due to centrifugation the two different density gradient gradient would be formed. The upper one is known as the the lighter areas the lighter dense areas is known as the supernatant okay this part is the supernatant supernatant and this lower part is known as the pellet or the uh, precipitate let me write it as the pellet or precipitate ppt dot this lower part now when they subjected this centrifuge tube in the auto radiography chamber or uh, they, no, they didn't subject the centrifuge tube sorry they collected the sample they collected the sample from one, one from the supernatant and another from the pellet now in the first uh, uh, in the first um, uh, observation when they collected the sample from the supernatant, from the supernatant of both of these tubes, they found that 
this supernatant in this case one, a case study one with 35 days isotope of uh, radioactive isotope of sulfur which was tagged, which was radio labeled on the protein coat, capsid of the uh, fudge virus, they found that this supernatant in this case was showing radioactivity. Okay, this part here was showing, supernatant was showing, showing radioactivity. Radioactive. And in the case 2, case study 2, where the, uh, the, they tagged the DNA, they tagged the DNA with the 32P phosphorus, okay. Then in that case what happened, uh, when they tagged the DNA with the 32P phosphorus, then in that case what happened, uh, the, uh, they, when they took the sample, they, they seen, they have seen that there was no radioactivity present in the supernatant. The supernatin was not radioactive at all. Instead, the pellet here, the pellet of the PPT precipitate here was showing radioactivity. This precipitate was showing radioactivity. Radioactivity. The precipitate was showing here. Now, this precipitate was more dense because what happened in this case, the Escherichia coli cells, the E. coli cells along with the DNA or the genome of the fudge virus got precipitated here. They got precipitated in the bottom of the centrifuge tube or the falcon. Here also in this case the same phenomena happened, the Escherichia coli, uh, coli, coli cells uh, got precipitated in the bottom of the centrifuge tube. Whereas here in both the cases also the fudge, the protein coat of the fudge remained in the supernatant. Here also the protein coat of the fudge along with the neck and the base plate remained in the supernatant okay now as i said the in the second case case study 2 they have observed the radioactivity in the pellet or the precipitate but in case of the first one they observed the radioactivity in case of the supernatant why this phenomena happened is that why it is why it happened in this first case they had radio labeled or tagged the protein coat or envelope of the virus with the 35 s and in the second case they tagged with it, it with 32 p okay now since uh, in the infection stage both in both the cases uh, the bacteriophage has inserted its dna within the escherichia coli cells the e coli cells carried the 32 the 32P tagged, the Escherichia coli cells carried the 32P tagged radio label DNA of the uh, bacteriophage. And so, in the subsequent stage of blending or agitation, subsequent stage of the blending or agitation, what happened? The bacteriophage along with the radio level of 35S got separated from the E. coli and in the case 2 the bacteria first got separated but the radio label DNA remained within the Escherichia coli cells. So in the subsequent stage of the centrifugation in the step of the experiment when the supernatant was having the 35S uh, radioactive capsid protein coat of the bacteriophage show, so the supernatant in the case study 1 was showing the radioactivity because the 35S radioactivity was present with the capsid that capsid is lighter compared to the E. coli cells along with the DNA of the fudge but in the case study 2 what happened the capsid was also present in the supernatant but the radio labeling tag was given to what? 
given to the DNA. The 32p phosphorus was given to the DNA of the bacteriophage. Now, when the DNA uh, was uh, DNA along with the E. coli cells got precipitated in the lower portion, this portion. That's why the, for this reason the lower the precipitate of the uh, precipitate of the solution intermixture or intermedium showed the radioactivity and in this case the supernatant showed the radioactivity. This means that they inferred from this experiment from all this phenomena they uh, inferred that DNA was the only substance which is being transfected or infected and is responsible for carrying a specific uh, trait or a specific function from one particular species to another or one particular generation to another. So they finally concluded that DNA is the only uh, uh, element that was responsible for uh, carrying the functions of the specific traits forward in generation or carrying out this vital functions of uh, the physiological regulations or physiological development or um, as uh, it, act as, it acted as that uh, model at that as that unit model which was truly carrying uh, was or truly responsible for entering into the body of another species or another cell and performing its activity so that's why the dna uh, from, from hence they concluded that the DNA was the only stable element in nature or the in only molecule in nature uh, which can be called as the true genetic element. Okay.